Welcome to Startup Out of the Box, a regular podcast about startups with Marco Silva and Victor Domingos. On this episode, we're going to talk about how working from home is really tough um, for most of us. How, what will change in uh, the new world when we return to the office and we need to be six feet apart from each other. But also, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the UK future fund for startups and scale-ups. Um, and that's it. Welcome to episode 27. Um, hi, Marco. How are you doing? All good? Hey. Good. All good. <laughs> Having a coffee. Getting ready for the afternoon. So, all good. Just another day. I really lost track. I think it's day 50 for me in the lockdown. So, um, uh, I really lost track of this. I stopped counting the days. For me, it's just uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> does it doesn't matter uh, how long it takes. But, um, so... Uh, Going to our first topic, which is um, uh, working from home, um, we have some statistics uh, uh, of, uh, of people uh, that find that it's really hard working from home. Most of them they didn't had in the, the, the gear that they needed uh, when they moved to home. They had to bring their uh, desktop computer from the office. Some of them, uh, they f actually f uh, uh, figure out uh, or find out that actually they work more than they usually do because, mm -hmm. you know, spend more time at home. Uh, the schedule is not uh, is not properly matched with the one that they had at the office. Um, bottom line, uh, there's a bunch of missed mis 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 expectations. Mis Exactly, myth expectations when it comes from working from home. So what's uh, because we are in a different kind of world because we already been working from home in the past, so this is not a challenge for us. But do you think that uh, for most people, uh, even for startup, it's going to be an issue, or is just for the kind of old traditional companies they're going to face this kind of uh, um, situation? So I think for the most like the old school companies or the more traditional, bigger uh, established companies, there will be a bigger challenge. Uh, but even their channel will also exist in startups. Um, so working from home, it's not for everyone. Working uh, remote is not for everyone. And people do need to realize that. Uh, we had people in the company before that wanted to give it a try working remotely. And after a couple of months, they decided that it wasn't for them because they missed being with people interacting in the office, uh, being able to just grab someone and go have a coffee. So it's not really for everyone. So there are challenges that some people don't um, think about until they start doing this. Um, and of course, like the first thing you, you get, so usually when people start working from home, uh, well, before they start working from home, they think that you, be, when since you're working from home, you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when they start working from home, they kind of realize, okay, there's a lot of work that can be done or that needs to be done. Um, so it takes a bit of time to for those people to, to understand like their schedules, their, how to control what they need to do during the day, uh, and set, and setting how uh, work hours. So one of the first mistakes that usually people do when they start working from home is just work because there's no... A split between office and home so they just like working uh, have lunch go back to work have dinner well since i'm here yeah, might as well just do some extra emails or uh, yeah. something else so it's like yeah. and that's one of the biggest mistakes and i think that's where most people have a difficulty getting used to uh, remote work or uh, homework um do you also think that um the the way that actually people plan their work whilst working from home is also going to be different because right now in the uk people are used to kind of the nine to five hours do you think that people are going to work after hours or are they going to move the way that they do their work probably to work more in the morning then spend some time with the kids then do some extra work after dinner stuff like that do you think that's going to change i think so because yeah, I think that's one of the advantages of working from home and working remotely, especially if you have uh, children, is that you can schedule your day. Uh, and of course, it's, this also uh, needs to be agreed with the, the company, the culture of the company. Because if the company maintains that nine to five hours and they don't realize it should be based on work and not amount of hours, then there's going to be some problems there. Uh, but yes, I think like, the advantages of working from home is really that I'm focused on the amount of work that you produce, what work you produce, and instead of hours, is really like I can focus in the morning, 
uh, some time with the kids, uh, work maybe for like for two hours, uh, have lunch, and then in the afternoon I can work the entire afternoon, and then after dinner, like before dinner, I can spend another hour, two hours with the children, and then if I need to still continue work to do, I can do that after hours. But I have time during the day I can slot between work and non-work related uh, actions. Uh, but of course, it takes people need to realize what works for them and what is important for them. Uh, one of the from uh, so we had, we're talking about uh, this um, uh, this study that was made to around two thousand workers in the UK, and the study says that seventy two percent of these workers they don't speak to anyone from work for a full day, which I think that by now uh, that probably is going to change because we move from and I remember before so every time we did any kind of uh, uh, conference calls. I would say, I don't know, 60, 70% of the people, or even more, didn't use a webcam. We just mm -hmm. call in, using phone call, using audio. Uh, they needed to present some kind of materials on that, but it, we weren't using video a lot. Right now, that's kind of mandatory, right? So every time you go to a call, you need to use video, you need to use a camera, because you need to have that kind of uh, feeling that mm -hmm. someone is on the other side, not just the voice. Um, do you think that that perception is also going to change? Do you think that people actually, because I'm seeing someone else and I'm getting used to it because I can see my, my relatives or my family, I just need to see them on video. Do you think that perception is going to also going to change in the future? I was thinking about that this morning and honestly, I don't think it's going to change. I think it's, things will go back as they were before. Uh, while now people are using more webcams, more video calls, uh, I think there's been a bit of overload uh, in, in conference calls and video calls and Zoom and whatever. So I think things will start uh, decreasing in, in the near future. Uh, people mm -hmm. will start getting tired of so many video calls, start realizing, no, I don't need to have a webcam always on. Um, so I think it will scale down a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. Sort of, we'll see. Uh, either way, uh, just to finish this kind of uh, topic from working from home, one of the things that also people said, it's 90% said they dress uh, uh, for uh, working at home. So they, uh, because in the beginning, uh, as I said, when you do a conference call, well, it doesn't matter if you were wearing a t-shirt or a suit or, or a shirt. Right now, because it's mandatory to use video, people start to get this kind of, uh, feeling that uh, they actually need to dress up to show up for a video. Um, so I'm guessing that you're not wearing your shorts today, are you? <laughs> uh, wearing shorts? Wearing anything? What, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like, I think that um, we don't need to go to extremes and wear a suit just because you're going to have a phone call with people in your office. Like Everyone is working from home. Everyone realizes what's going on. But yeah, just don't appear on your video call just without wearing anything. Like, uh, But I think getting dressed for work work, like casual, uh, business casual, stuff like that, that's like... Not necessary, right? Well, if, if that's what you like, wear it, but don't wear yeah. it just because you're going to have a phone call with someone in your company. Like everyone's working from home. Everyone realizes what it is like. It is casual in the nature of it. So I think that that pressure shouldn't be there. Yeah. So uh, one of the, the on the previous um, episode we were talking about KPIs versus OKRs. I think that we need to review that that subject in a couple of uh, uh, the next episodes that we're going to talk because I'm guessing that people the way that people are going to be measured it's going to be really different uh, whilst working at the office and right now working from home. Either way, um, moving on to the next topic, uh, which is where everyone is working from home, but when we return to the new normal, we need to work from the office. And actually, the picture that we have on the side is uh, Neo working from that uh, that uh, kind of cubicle space in the office where you actually you need to have um, need to have space from each other. Um, there are some ideas about to use the new office space because, uh, as I said, if you're working on a co-working space, that's going to be a really tough one. But um, in the new in the future, you actually need to have uh, need to be six feet apart from each other. Um, how do you? Are, are you okay with the camera there? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, so um, are you comfortable with your office? Yeah, uh, yeah it's good. It's good. Do, do you think that companies are going to have an issue 
um, also in the future when they move to, because it's going to be an office space. Um, I think one of the ideas that people started to talk about was, first of all, they need to have some kind of special, uh, I don't know, protective equipment, some plexiglass and stuff like that around themselves in the office so that they, they don't uh, spread the virus. The second thing is they need to actually be um, uh, spread apart from each other. But the most interesting one is you need to take uh, turns to when you go to office. So it means that to avoid rush hour, some people will go in the morning and some others will go in the afternoon. First of all, so that they don't use the rush hour uh, always at the same time. Secondly, because the space that you had previously in the office, which say, I don't know, for a, I don't know, I don't know, 50 square feet or whatever, uh, you would put X amount of people there. But because now you need to be uh, spread apart from each other, you need more space just to work there. So you can have all of your workforce mm-hmm. at the same time at the office throughout the day. So you need, they need to take turns. Do you think that's going to be a huge impact uh, in our life in the future? Maybe some years ago, I would think so. But at least that's something that I've seen a lot of companies already starting to adapt, even before uh, this COVID-19 situation. Um, like we've seen that situation on a small consulting company yeah, in the UK, uh, yeah, in London, where the office wasn't big enough for everyone. So they kind of they divided like the employees. Like, only go to the office if you have to work in a team project, meeting, something like that, else just stay at home. Uh, so there was always space available in the office for whoever needed to be in the office. Uh, but also, for example, my mother, she works in a highly traditional industry that's insurance. And her company has been doing that already for like a couple of months, even before the entire COVID situation started, of people rotating, uh, working from home and working from the office space uh, to get a bit more space as for everyone to be there and um, now moving forward i think we will have for a couple of months a bit more uh, care about that like companies expecting a more more space like you mean like you mentioned about the uh the not so much open office where you can put everyone possible but okay let's create some space between the people that will exist uh also, like I mentioned, there's um, I've, I've read some threads on Twitter, like a company that provides office supplies, just mm-hmm. like that image from Neo of the small cubicles, and they just sold out everything that they had, and they are backlogged for the next three or four months. So it's kind of looks like there's already there's already a lot of companies that had open office, uh, the open spaces, uh, and now they are and realizing okay, we need to put cubicles inside, and that should be kind of like the trend for the next couple of maybe the next uh, 10, 12 months, so the next year, that should be the trend. Uh, but I think like most employees that work in open spaces will be happy with that because that's one of the biggest concerns like in open off, in open spaces is really like the noise and everyone on top of you. Everyone hates open spaces. Uh, so I think a lot of employees will be happy with this, like they're having their own tiny space that they can focus on and not be like sharing a desk with someone right next to them, like just moving your arm and you're touching someone too. So one of the, the data that, uh, that we have for this new uh, office space comes from Cushman and Wakefield. And they develop a six-feet office plan for their Amsterdam HQ. Mm-hmm. And between this, they uh, actually one of the rules that they put is you're going to have um, a, a kind of um, uh, uh, arrows in the floor to, uh, so that you can follow in a specific uh, kind of uh, circle or path that you avoid people. So if you want to go, let's say, to the cafeteria or something like that, this is the way that you need to go because everyone is is using that and you don't cross with other people when you when you go there or when you come back. It uh, reminds me of, of, of kind of a few years when I was working in Portugal when you went to the Siemens office in, uh, in Lisbon. They had a cafeteria on one side and they had a kind of a massive garden around it and everyone was doing... That um, that um, that kind of uh, I don't know five minutes circuit. walking circuit around the garden, and what happened it was they had to do that uh, clockwise, and then once I tried to do that counterclockwise, and <laughs> hell broke 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 loose because break loose you because broke the, the system whole, exactly because no one understood why the hell I was walking in a uh, different direction. Um, so there's this kind of laws that um, companies that run massive office spaces they're probably going to implement. As I said, uh, Cushman and Wakefield is doing the 
has this kind of uh, book uh, regarding and, and rules regarding the, the six feet office with the uh, clocks in the in the floor, but also desk uh, placemats that you're gonna use, then you're gonna throw away at the end of the, the, of the day, or even the plexiglass. I think that this is yeah. gonna be more a reality nowadays, not just something that we saw on a, on a Neo or on a Matrix uh, movie, but actually it's gonna be more reality. Um, any suggestions that you uh, have uh, to deal with this? Take a deep breath, relax, <laughs> and well, yep, that's basically it. <laughs> ah, one more thing. Um, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be the new norm. People will get used to it. The human uh, humans can adapt. Uh, there will be some resistance in some companies and um, by some people. Um, I think eventually things will return to what they were before. Um, yeah. uh, hopefully. Uh, uh, one more thing, uh, yeah. Ford, the factory workers at Ford, uh, they're testing a, a, a wristband that buzzes when you are less than six feet apart from each other. Uh, my suggestion is, instead of buzzing, I think that people should wear one that does this kind of electrical shock. If you, <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you are less than six feet apart from each other, you just get this kind of electrical shock, just move to another direction. That could be fun. Uh, that could be interesting. Either way, no. moving to the last well, topic. Well, if you like shocks, that's... Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> moving to the last topic, which is about um, something that the UK government launched uh, two weeks, one week ago. Uh, it's called... April. Yeah, 20 of April. It's called the Future Fund for UK Startups and Scale-Ups. Uh, one of the, the, the things that the government was uh, being pushed for is that they launch a bunch bunch of uh, incentives for um, employees and companies, but they hadn't looked at the startup uh, world here in the UK. So they right now launched um, 500 millions as co-investment, which means that um, companies are going to have, uh, the, the state is going to have a participation on some companies or some startups, which is going to be interesting um, just for them to keep their jobs. Uh, but kind of taking a step back, do you think that after this COVID-19 there is going to be even a startup world or it's going to be completely disrupted? Like, I think we, we talked about, for example, that's what the UK government is doing. We did talk about it maybe like three weeks ago, I think, uh, sharing ideas of how the government could help uh, startups and I think this is a good idea uh, because like it's basically a loan they're not giving money just giving out money uh, and they're kind of working at, in part of, in with risk so that's kind of impressive like the UK government working with risk so they are giving out money uh, well sort of and... sort of so so the money yeah, is yeah. is in loan yes but if you don't yeah. pay then the government is going to take equity in the company yeah, exactly. But of course, taking the equity in the company, that doesn't mean that the government will get that money back because the company well can just close. Yeah. And so yeah, that, that's kind of like the, the risk part out of it. Um, but I think that's not something that most companies, like companies don't want to fail. So, uh, and I think like it's, it's a good way, it's a good, at least in the eye level, it looks mm -hmm. like a good program, like a, a, something that's interestingly well thought of. So it might uh, have some interest, like it might be have a good impact on the UK economy. Well, um, sure, but we also need to look about um, the bureaucracy that this is going to create, uh, even for companies, right? right? Uh, that's going to be an issue with that. First of all, secondly, it's how the funds can actually get to the startup. So obviously, there are some rules. You need to be a UK-based registered company. You need to have uh, um, uh, you need to have at, raise at least a quarter million in the last five years to be eligible. So there are some kind of rules for that. Um, either way, I yeah. think it's going to be a good a good thing uh, to support the startups because this uh, this country lives um, uh, needs to live with them, and, and actually uh, it requires it's known to have to, to support uh, a lot of startups and a lot of good ideas started here. So bottom line, I think it's going to be a good idea. We just need to see the details and how this money we actually we're going to get 
to the to the startups. I'm not sure if this is going to have an issue with if you are a startup and you actually follow your your employees if you're not going to get the money or if and I still not sure. I still didn't had a lot of details. Um, do you yep. think that uh, the rules that they set up is going to be good enough for everyone, or even the smaller ones are going to have some troubles to uh, to apply for? Well, I think it's impossible to have rules that help and satisfy everyone. Hmm. So I think that's uh, already assumed. Um, but like, let's see what when people start applying for this, what feedback comes out. Like I mentioned, it is the government, uh, so there will be bureaucracy involved somehow. Uh, but let's see. Now I think in the next couple of weeks we will start reading a bit more about companies applying for this and what their feedback is. True, uh, true. So uh, this startup fund, just a couple of more uh, information. This startup fund is from the Scale Up Institute and they're going to manage this and it's already in place. They have some millions, uh, 750 million just for research and development fund as well. So I think that you, uh, if companies apply for this, it's going to be a good thing. Um, either way, it's just in early days. I'm certain that we're going to get some more data um, as the week's yeah. coming by. And we can um, we can talk about this probably in, in detail in the next um, next episodes or so. Um, yeah, Hopefully. that's pretty much it. Um, at least for this episode for today, uh, we've been uh, a bit off because we've been doing a lot of other lives in uh, in in Portuguese in different languages. But uh, we're back to the startup part of the box, and this was episode twenty seven. Um, see you on the next one. Bye. Stay safe. Stay home. Have a good one.